So continuing and to finish that thought. So if you are financially well off, but you still are not financially well off to purchase your own home, you're not doing anybody a service out there by just going along with this program. You see, there's no easy out. None of us get to skate. We're all stuck between a rock and a hard spot here. If you want to do something for not only future generations, for this generation right now, you've got to fight against the high cost of living. Okay, because listen, all we need to happen is for one facet, one element of our cost of living, and in this case, it's housing. They've run up our housing costs dramatically. It caused a chain reaction. Okay, and listen, there's a lot of people that for what is a nominal fee for you to pay, it is a, an exorbitant burden for somebody else, and it's going to put them over the edge. It's going to be the straw that broke the camel's back and make them homeless. There's a lot of financial desperation that's totally unnecessary, concocted suffering out there. And it really pisses me off. And I know it pisses God off. It drives, I mean, you hate dubious war? It drives that kind of crap. Okay? It drives the national debt. We've got 25% of people working in the financial services. What are they doing? They're non-productive. They're shuffling papers around and crap, pretending to be relevant. Working for the bankster class. They're masters at the top. Okay, we don't need it. We don't need people committing crimes because of a few bucks. If they had a few bucks in their pocket, they wouldn't be committing these crimes. And we're spending all this money on this criminal industrial complex that we wouldn't need to spend. All these jobs that are relevant now wouldn't be if we weren't doing this. You understand? We'd be so much cheaper. I'm a fiscal conservative. We'd save tons of money. we create this social welfare state. Just Section 8 housing to supplement poor people that can't afford their housing costs. $50 billion every year goes to that. Do you understand? The madness is just rife. Our whole civilization is rife with utter madness. Permeating from the gates of hell. Infecting all of us. And our thinking, and we've all been slowly inculcated and trained, indoctrinated into going along with this sick flow. Flow into hell. Further and further sinking down this demonic rabbit hole into hell. Where does it end? It ends, with, the buck stops when you say it stops. Okay, you get angry too. It's good. You're, you're indignant. Okay, you're, you're being assaulted. You understand? You're being stolen from. You're being lied to. You're being cheated. You're being subjugated, marginalized. You're not free. Okay, anybody that says they're free because they're born in America, they're off their nut. They're delusional. Unless you're financially free, you're not free. And we keep getting more and more enslaved. We're on this hamster wheel that keeps getting harder and harder to turn. It seems like the smart ones get the hell off. Fight tyranny. Keep your cost of living as low as you can. Even if you can afford to have a higher cost of living, pay it forward. Do it for somebody else. We've all got to help each other. We're one family. Okay, we're brothers and sisters. We've got to see things through God's eyes, through his point of view. Care about one another. This is loving one another. Giving a damn. Okay, don't just say, well, I'm okay. Screw everybody else. You're all on your own. Social Darwinism, rat race. It's dog eat dog. I could crack that ever harder nut. I could reach that ever harder bar. Uh, it's tough luck for all you weak pansies out there. You're weak links in the chain, man. Just, you know, you won't say it, but, you know, put a bullet through your brain. Go die under a bridge. I don't know, man. Buck up. Take two jobs. Take three jobs. Work harder. Put your nose to the grindstone. That's the answer. Everybody that works hard is successful. You, you see the stupidity? You see the absurdity? You see how preposterous that kind of thinking is? But yet so many people do it. Hey, if I can do it, everyone can do it. We can all do it. So that's the answer. If you're making your money, your business is being a landlord, property management, let's say, you're telling me that we can all be landlords and we can all be property managers? And exactly, how is that going to work? Pray tell. Do explain because child, uh, you can see that's not going to work. Okay, if we're all landlords, we're none of us are tenants, right? You understand? I mean, where we're at, it, it, we're, we're down the tubes. We're those frogs in the pot. We're cooked. 
And now they just want to devour us. They, they, you know, now that they realize, hey, knowledge is reaching a critical mass. The people are going to be empowered one way or another. They're going to start doing the math, and they're going to see that guys like me aren't crazy. Sure, I'm an admitted egalitarian. Sure, I'm an admitted idealist. But am I radical? Not at all. And to say that we should give minimum wage workers commensurate cost of living adjustments year after year so it didn't seem radical with Bernie Sanders, 15 an hour, 15 an hour. No, a Bernie, talk about the balkanization that's taken place. The, the, the divisiveness that's taken place in this country at the hands of these people and how they've done it. They've got tyranny. They've got oppression down to a fine science. They've been walking this tightrope very successfully at keeping us stupid, creating molehills out of, creating mountains out of molehills and keeping us distracted, keeping our eyes off the target. This top money printing class, the gangster bankster class, and these politicians, these lapdog, sycophantic politician, brown nosed, boot licking freaks that have sold us out. Acting all elitist like, oh, well, I'm smarter and uh, I know what's right when 90% of the American people, we're talking Republicans and Democrats that betray the people. Do you understand? We're talking about people that profess to be liberals, people that profess to be, ca to be conservatives, people that profess to be socialists, people that profess to be capitalists that have sold us down the river. So let's unify and tell these people what's what. They need to be parented, and God can empower you and I to parent these people. That's it, man. I'm not going along with the program. I choose my reality. God says, hey, you, you dream, Christopher. You, you can imagine. Yep, that's right. Your reality is just as valid as anyone. You check in with me daily, and you pray to have the right opinion about stuff, to have the right belief systems. To have the right credos and philosophies and values, then I'll give them to you. You open up, you want more knowledge, you want to see clearly, then come on over. It's clear. You get out of those muddied and bloodied waters. I'm willing. I'm your parent and I love you. I'm God Almighty. I'm your owner. Have a right relationship with your owner. Understand the relationship is owner and owny. Us humans can't own anything. Only God can own anything because it's something you keep forever. Everything that we get, all this materialism, possessions, and money, and all this crap, it's temporary, like a dream. You, you know you got to give it up. That's the science behind it. We know we got to give it up. We can't own anything, not even our bodies. God owns our very soul. Do you understand? He's the only rightful owner. That's the relationship. We need God to help us extricate ourselves from this mess. And even if he doesn't until the return of Christ, at least in the meantime, you can cope, you can contend, you can be exactly who you want to be, not who you think you want to be on a superficial, topical manner. That's just, you know, it was just way, well, I was taught, I think, you know, I want to be this guy or that guy. I want to be successful as, as defined by the world. Of course I do. I love money, and I know women love money, and I want a woman to love me, so I got to make a lot of money. and All this crap that just our heads are just rattling around with all this nonsense we've been trained to, to believe. And, you know, it, it, I tell you what, I mean, there's a huge departure. When you see the light, you see what a departure the way God would have this system and the way it is, okay, because it can work. We can all be completely prosperous. We can all be completely, absolutely free in that regard, okay, and it has nothing to do with money of any type, okay, and that's what our parents want to give us. That's what makes sense. That's what's logical. That's what's intellectual, okay, that's settled science, in the mind of God, okay, that, it's like math, it just, let's, you know, just look at things prima facie, from God's perspective, from his point of view, and then just adopt that, embrace that in our lives, and teach and preach those same things, because it's clear as a lie today, man, it all makes perfect sense, we've got to be free, and that means we've all got to be financially free, Okay, if you're free in every other aspect, but you're chained in that one, that's a big deal. And you see all those jobs out there. I mean, people tell you, oh, the idea is just to get a great education and all this. And so what are you, how are you helping the common man by doing that? By you being financially well-heeled. How does that help somebody that's not? 
What does that say to them? Well, you should be like me. How's that going to work again? Be like you. So if we all did that, if you're an engineer or an architect or a dentist or a doctor, so we all want that job. Also at a banker or whatever it is that you've been successful at, made you got a lot of money. A rapper, an actor. So you're so valuable and the world's going to come to a grinding halt without you, huh? Or your ilk. And if we all want to do that job, the system's going to work if we all do what you did. And so you're going to marginalize the people who are really keeping the, 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 the wheels of society turning, the glue that holds the fabric of society together, the common man and woman out there, and you're going to subjugate them, and you're going to stand before God. Oh, wait, do you believe in God? Have we established that? Whose planet this is? Okay. Do we have a right to share it? They're trading on resources every day on Wall Street, and we don't have a right to share that? We can't do a Tobit tax? We can't do at least a universal basic income. That's too liberal. That's radical. We don't believe in giving away. Who the hell are you to decide that? you putting yourself in the place of God. That's what Satan did. That's what Lucifer does. Do you understand whose side you're on? How are you going to answer for that? You're going to wind up in hell. And it's not going to be those that squeaked into hell. Inadvertently, whoopsie, I ended up in hell. No. The ones that are going to be ruling down there are your Hitler types, your Jeffrey Dahmers, your Pol Potts, etc., etc., Charles Manson, thumping you on the head day and night. Work harder, work faster. Yeah, what's your worst nightmare, evildoers, that God turns out to be just like you in his business practices? And he says, you marginalized others. You thought you were so high and mighty and important. Here you go. I'm just like you. Yeah, I hate elitism. I don't hate a living being, but I hate certain precepts and ideas. And I see the effect they have on people. If any other creature on the face of this earth could see the ravages money has done to humanity, you think they'd have anything to do with it? But we are far and away more intellectual than all the other creatures. And look at us. We're just swimming in this, this nonsense, the, the, the filthy lucre. It's debasing all of us. It's polluted us all. It's adulterated us all. It's corrupted us all. We're in a lot of trouble. We're down this demonic rabbit hole toward hell a long way. And sometimes the best thing at some point is just save yourself. And, you know, try. Reach out to people because you don't want your, their blood on your hands or head. Yeah, I didn't do anything. I could have spoke up. Maybe, maybe they would have seen the light and said, wait a minute, nobody's ever talked to me like this. And this guy cares about me. Why? I mean, hey, because there's no shortage of, of room in heaven, man. Uh, I, I mean, you know, the, the, hey, there's plenty of real estate. God, you know, he's got it all together. He's figured it all out. So, hey, he wants everybody. He wants the, he didn't come for the righteous. Jesus said, I didn't come for the, I came for the wicked, the sinners out there. So he wants, and you know what he wants, we've got to want. Okay, so it's about saving souls at the end of the day from going on the, down that path toward hell. They don't see it. Maybe you're the one that can wake them up. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm doing more than I think I am. More than maybe I'm doing less than I think I am. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's in God's hands at the end of the day. And at some point, you got to let go and save yourself. Like in the book of Jude, I believe it's the last book before Revelation, but it talks about this. I mean, you know, the, the others, you, you just, you try to save people from the, the flames of hell that are lapping at their behind. You do everything you can to reach them and to convince them, hey, you know what, you're, you're going down the wrong path. So in other words, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Make it as palatable as you can. But sometimes people need to be metaphorically knocked over the head to understand you've got to like impress upon them the gravity of the situation. This is life and death. This is about eternal salvation. Where we go from here? How much stock? How invested do you want to be in this current temporary ephemeral establishment? I mean, come on, people. We've got to work together here. We've got to unify. We've got to reach people and understand the nuts and bolts of what I'm saying here and get it together. But I'm scared because as I speak, things keep getting worse. The cost of living still going up. Everybody says that's the only answer. So it's capitalism, I guess. And if you're against capitalism and you're against America, I'm thinking, my God, it's been nothing but anti-capitalism my whole life. That's what led us down this path. It's fascist. And people working in the government, city, county, state, federal government, they go along to get, hey, you know what? I mean, it's benefiting me 
raising the taxes. We got to raise taxes because we need a raise. Don't I mean? Doesn't everybody? We get a raise. We just take it. We tax you. We force you to pay. Now we got people voting to shoot themselves in the foot. Raise your taxes, man. Make other people raise taxes. So we can say it's a democracy. Well, the majority, 51% of people wanted your taxes raised. So we're going to raise all your taxes. So those 51%, maybe they're working for the government. They benefit from your raise in taxes. Do you understand? They can give themselves the cost of living adjustment, give themselves pay raises. They're, they have job security. They have financial freedom. They have financial security. At your 